Hello, welcome back. We're going to put all the individual components that we have seen earlier uh, together into a single weight average cost of capital. So first of all, um, we want to talk about the weights. The weights is determined by the relative importance of different kinds of financing that a company uses. Uh, and whenever possible, we want to use market value weights. And the reason for that is because we are making decisions for future projects. So we want to use current market information. So how do we compute these capital structure weights? So the term capital structure and the phrase capital structure weight refers to the company's use of different types of financing. So for example, uh, the company may use 40% debt and 60% equity. That is the capital structure weight. So a capital structure weight literally is a percentage of the company financed by each component. Uh, it's helpful to be familiar with the different notations so that it's less confusing. So first of all, we want to use market values. For equity, we use the letter E to denote equity. So the market value of equity is simply the number of shares outstanding times the stock price per share. And the market value of debt, so again, D here stands for debt, is the number of shares of bonds outstanding times the market price of bond. And the market value of preferred stock, so again here is P, is the number of outstanding preferred stock times the preferred stock price per share. And the value of the firm, so we use V to denote the value of the entire firm, is just some of its components. So the value of the firm is the market value of debt times the market plus the market value of equity plus the market value of preferred stock. And the weights, so if you say before, are those percentages. So the weight of equity is simply the dollar value. So remember that this is E here is the dollar value, the dollar market value of equity divided by the dollar value of total of the entire firm. So that represents the percentage of the firm that is financed using equity. The same for debt, we take the market value of debt divided by the market value of the firm. And preferred stock, we take the market value of preferred stock divided by the market value of, um, of the firm. Uh, just one caveat. Uh, Preferred stock is actually not very common. Not every company has preferred stock. And if it doesn't have preferred stock, the number is simply zero. So it doesn't really change. Um, uh, it, it really doesn't change the, the equation much. Uh, another thing that I want to also introduce is the, uh, the, I, the outstanding debt. Uh, some companies may have different types of debts or different bond issues outstanding. And if a company has more than one bond issue outstanding, uh, then the market value of debt um, will be the uh, weighted average. And the, uh, the weight of the, of the bond will also be the weighted average. So let's take a simple example to, in this example, we emphasize on computing capital structure weight. So let's say you have a company that has a market value of equity of $500 million and a market value of debt of $475 million. We can compute the capital structure weight. So first of all, we want to find the total value of the firm, which is V. So since we have $500 million in equity and $475 million in bond in debt. So our total market structure or total market value of the firm is $975 million. And to compute the weight for equity, we take the market value of equity, which is $500 million, divided by the total value of the firm, which is $975 million. And that gives us 51.28%. So this is the capital structure weight for equity. For debt, we take the $475 million in debt divided by $975 million in equity, and that gives us 48.72%. And that is our capital structure weight of debt. One of the very important useful thing is when you add up all the weight, if you have equity, debt, and preferred stock, you add up all the weight, the weight should always add up to one. Next, let's take a uh, further look at 
some important characteristics of the weighted average cost of capital, and that has to do with tax. When we are doing capital budgeting, we our focus is on the after-tax cash flow. So when we compute the cost of equity, uh, cost of capital, we also need to take into account the in any effect that tax may have. Um, one of the very important part of the cost of capital is cost of debt. Interest expense, which is the cost of debt, is tax deductible. So when a company borrow money, it can actually reduce its tax liability because its interest expense is tax deductible. And therefore, what the, the net effect of that is, um, that borrowing is actually cheaper because of this tax subsidy. So when we look at the after-tax cost, we need to take into the after-tax cost of debt. And for preferred stock and common stock, uh, there's no difference because um, dividends are not tax deductible. Dividends are not considered an expense, whereas interest expenses. So when we compute the cost of debt, uh, the, remember that the cost of debt is the yield to maturity for a bond. We need to then multiply that answer by one minus the tax rate if we are talking about the after tax cost of debt. So remember the before tax cost of debt is just the yield to maturity. But the after tax cost of debt, we multiply that by one minus the tax rate. Um, now we are ready to put all this together. Now dividends are not tax deductible, so we don't have to worry about the impact. However, interest expenses. So let's put all the components together. So we have to we have reviewed how to compute the individual cost components. Now we are we have also just finished computing the capital structure weight. So we are ready to put all of this together. So the final equation for the weighted average cost of capital. So this is a the cost that takes into account the cost of equity, the cost of debt, the cost of preferred stock, and the relative capital structure weight of those components. Uh, so we, is, as the name implies, is a simple weight to average. The one thing that we want to emphasize is that for cost of debt, we need to take into account the fact that interest is tax deductible. Now, uh, we'll end the video here. In the next video, we're going to uh, go over an extended example that will uh, we'll go through the calculation for the weighted average cost of capital from scratch, including every single step. See you soon.